Hello viewers, welcome to Studio NIOS. I am Dr. Pooja Chopra and today we will discuss transmission or expository approach. As a teacher or parent, we often hear children saying, Oh, why should I study science? Then we might ask ourselves, why teach science? Why we should teach science? What is the objective of teaching science? The typical answer so this frequent question has been because science is all around us. So we need to know about it or it is important to have an understanding of science for everyday life. Science is really all around us. Everything is science. Everywhere it's science. However, the children hardly finds it relevance in their daily lives. Many students consider it too hard and monotonous to learn right from the early stages of education. They might ask a question, why? Why study science? It is of no relevance. We can't apply science anywhere. What are these Newton's law of motion are applicable? What we will do with these laws? This can be one of the reason that we observe a declining trend in the enrollment of children opting science at higher education because nowadays students find science a highly monotonous and boring subject. What should a teacher do? So science teaching should be interesting and meaningful to the lives of the learner. Many a times as a science teacher you must have thought that what is the best method of teaching science and which strategies should be used to impart true science education. The phrase here is true science education. What does it mean? Let us discuss the vision of true science education according to NCF 2005. There are three factors involved here. First is the learner, child. Second is the environment physical, natural and social around the learner and third is the object of the learning that is science. We can regard good science education as one that is true to the child, true to life and true to science. What does it mean? In the context of NCF 2005, true to child means that the teaching learning of science should be understandable to the child and be able to engage the child in meaningful and joyful learning. The important phase here is meaningful. Who find it meaningful? The child and the ch children find these scientific classrooms as a joyful learning experience, not as a monotonous and boring recitation of facts and theories which they are expected to rote memorize. According to NCF 2005, science teaching should be a joyful experience. Students should be able to enjoy science. They should be able to learn science themselves, should be able to construct meaning of science themselves and not a mere recitation of boring facts and figures. Then th thing, second thing is true to life. True to life means that the science teaching should be related to the environment of the child. Science teaching should prepare him or her for the world of work outside and promotes the concern for life and preservation of environment. A true science education is one that make students environment friendly. They should import, they should realize the importance of environment around them and do all the possible things for a sustainable environment. Then comes another point, true to science. True to science means that science teaching learning should convey significant aspects of science content at appropriate level and engage the child 
in the learning, the process of acquiring and validating scientific knowledge. This means that science education should be age appropriate. It should be the according to the mental level of the learner. It should be able to engage the learner in learning the process of acquiring and validating scientific knowledge for himself or herself. In this thing, teacher is just a facilitator, whereas the role of the student is at the center stage. The student is expected to elaborate, to engage, to explore and to find solution and, and then apply these solutions into their lives. So, pedagogy of science deals with strategies of teaching learning, organizing classroom experiences, knowledge about preconception of learners and transaction, the concept of diverse group of learners relating with their preconception, so that they can assimilate and accommodate new information to make meaning of it. There is a paradigm shift in teaching learning of science. Many a times it is advocated there are two approaches. One is behavioral approach which views learners as passive. Learners according to this approach learners are empty slate. Teachers has to provide knowledge to them. The role of teacher is the most important one. As a teacher, one has to teach facts, concepts, rules, generalization across all the subject matter and at all levels of education. Henderson 1963 has systematically analyzed thousands of audio tapes of classroom teaching of mathematics teachers. He has identified the four journal moves which are required to teach any rule. Now let us discuss what are these four general rules. First is statement of the rule which is uh, acronymed as SR. A statement of rule under study may be made either assertion move by the students or the teacher. Then is clarification of the rule which is called as CR. Through the use of examples, demonstrations, evidences of proof, discussion, discussion of the sub rule, this rule is classified. And this again can be done by the student or as well as teacher. Then comes the justification of the rule, JR. This move identifies the veracity of that knowledge which is under study, cross proofs, opinions of expert, extra. Then the last is application of the rule, AR. In order to ensure that the students are able to take the learned rules into the other settings, there must be some form of practice. The students must be able to apply the knowledge that they have learned in the four wall of the classroom to the outside world. They must use this knowledge. They must use the rules, the statements they have learned in the classroom to the journal word outside. Different methods can be generated by making use of one or more moves referred above and changing the sequence of these moves. In short, all the three methods are not mutually exclusive but are related to each other. Now, what are the three methods? We have discuss, discussed about expository method of teaching, then there is a discovery method and then there is a new method called 5E model or 7E models which we will be discussing in next classes. Today, we will discuss a very important topic, the transmission approach. It is very highly essential for every teacher need to be conservant with these moves so that depending on the subject matter, availability of resources, time, extra, he or she 
can select and execute appropriate method while teaching in the classroom. According to researchers, there is no single one method. All the methods are there in the kitty of the teacher. The teacher has to decide what he should select according to the context, according to the level of the learner, according to the situation, according to the resources available. We will be discussing various methods as uh, I have talked earlier that is transmission method or expository method, discovery method and then the new constructivist approach which is called as 5e model or 7e model but a teacher should be acquainted with all these methods because all these methods are not independent of each other. They are somewhat mutually exclusive. So, in short, the concept of method can be stated in terms of a mathematical optic equation as method of teaching is equal to content plus processing of content. So, a good teacher is the one who knows his content and who is also acquainted with various methods of teaching, various method of various strategies of teaching. In this lecture, we will discuss expository or transmission approach of teaching science. Other methods will be taken earlier or later. In expository approach, all the cues are provided by the teacher while teaching. The deductive thinking, whereas, whereas in abstract content is differentiated by the teacher giving appropriate example to, to the students. So, in expository method, we will be discussing the role of the teacher. In this method, teaching learning process is totally controlled by the teacher. Hence, it is a teacher centered method. It is also called as a traditional method of teaching science, which is in opposition of the new methods of teaching science effectively called as a constructivist approach. Now, what does this expository approach actually means? Expository approach is also known as transmission approach. In this approach, the teacher is the communicating maximum information to the students in minimum amount of time. Hence, it is very much cost effective and time effective. This approach, teacher is able to transmit knowledge and it can complete the syllabus in a stipulated given time. This approach helps the teacher to cover the content to be taught to the students. This approach is widely used all across the subjects and different level of methods by the teacher. The main proponent of this method is David P. Osborne. The word expository is derived from exposition, which means an explanation or interpretation in which the commentary by the teacher is given that seek to clarify the meaning of and implication of the object of exposition. In this approach, there are various methods such as expository method, tell and do method, deductive method and this approach is totally teacher centered because the major work is done by the teacher. It is the teacher in this approach which is giving the commentary which is giving the explanation, which is giving a well-organized lecture. If the initial move of the teacher is the statement of the rule or generalization of principle followed by clarification, justify, justification and application of the rule, then the sequence of moves is known as expository move. For example, if a teacher starts with giving statement of the 
rule then he give examples he give non examples and in the next step he justify the rule and then in the next step he also applies the rule so it is a totally teacher centered method it is the teacher who is responsible to execute all these moves in a pre decided manner depending on the combination of these moves and number of moves used by the teacher while teaching the expository method take different forms such as telling method tell and do method lecture method and expository method in order to be effective expository teacher the teachers must use all the four moves in a sequence that has mentioned above let us study the following example wherein expository methods has been applied to a unit from 6th standard science the topic here is miscibility or immiscibility of liquids so the teacher will the first stage first stage is statement of the rule and who will do this move teacher the teacher will state the rule in front of the whole class if two liquid mixes very well with each other then the liquids are known as miscible liquid so the teacher when goes to the class he will write the topic on the board and then he said okay students today we will be discussing about the miscible liquids and the immiscible liquids so he will say what are miscible liquids he will provide a definition that if two liquids mix very well with each other then the liquids are known as miscible liquids then he will go and tell the de definition of immiscible liquids that is if the two liquids do not mix well then the two liquids are known as immiscible liquids so the teacher can make use of different media to show this rule to the students such as writing on the board or use of ppt or preparing a worksheet specially prepared by the teacher to record the data after introducing the rule to the students the teacher will give different examples by demonstration of miscibility or immiscibility of two liquids all the cues are provided by the teacher hence the observations also should be from the teacher only in this process students are listening carefully to the teacher as all the cues all the explanation all the material is provided by the teacher then came the second stage clarification or explanation of the rule in order to clarify the rule to the students the teacher will conduct the experiment to demonstrate miscibility and immiscibility of any two liquids he will have to use a number of liquid to clarify the rule he will used the above required materials he will be using test tubes liquids such as water alcohol milk kerosene lemon juice mustard oil vinegar coconut oil buttermilk and many others and then he will observe a data sheet first one what will he do he will take liquid number 1 okay student this is liquid one number 1 this is water now i will pour liquid number 2 called milk now what you have been observed the observations are again made by the teacher he will say okay milk is dissolved in as you are seeing that milk and water are dissolved very much dissolved so they are known as miscible liquids and then he will go and go on the teacher should demonstrate in number of example to clarify miscibility and immiscibility of two liquids each example should be related to the rule stated in the beginning this will help the students to assimilate the rule meaningfully for example while teaching okay students see this is liquid number 
this is kerosene and this is diesel. Now, let us mix this liquid. What you will show? It will be seen that these two liquids are mixed well with each other. With each other. So, the teacher will tell whether this mixture is miscible or not miscible. Now comes the stage justification of the rule. The justification of the rule can be done by various techniques such as historical development of the rule, providing the rule by different methods, asking the students to perform the experiments and reporting of observation. So, teacher will go on saying okay this rule was developed by this scientist and then this rule can be proved by this this method and he will ask students to perform the experiment. In this experiment the teacher can justify by changing the sequence of the liquid. If li liquid A is miss miscible with liquid B then B is miscible with liquid A. He will show all these things. Then application of the rule. The teachers can apply the rule to more than liquids, two liquids. For example, if A is miscible with B, B is miscible with C, then A is miscible with C. What should happen if milk would not have been miscible with water? What would happen if kerosene would not be have been miscible with diesel or petrol. All these answers has to be provided by the teacher only. So, this is a teacher centered approach. Every time the teacher will relate to rule it is stated in the beginning, Osbel has termed it as an advanced organizer. This advanced organizer is differentiated in terms of example. Every time the teacher will relate to the rule that is stated in the beginning, Oswell has termed it as an advanced organizer. This advanced organizer is differentiated in terms of example. Every time examples are anchored with advanced organizer resulting into more meaningful verbal learning. Now, we will be discussing the advantages of this approach. This is the most preferred method or approach by the teachers all over the world. Why this is most uh, preferential method? Because it is effective in communicating new knowledge in short period of time. The teachers always complain shortage of time to complete the syllabus. If this method is judicially used by the teacher, the teacher can cover the syllabus. And this approach also advocates a gestaltic view of the subject. Gestaltic view of the subject is presented to the students resulting into meaningful verbal learning. It is effective for knowledge and comprehension objectives, there is no conclusive proof. It is suitable for all types of subject matters and at high all high levels of education. Hence, it is still used to a larger extent at all levels because it is cost effective, it is time effective and teacher can complete this labors in a given period of time. Now, what are the limitations? Although this is widely used approach method, it suffers from the following limitations. In this approach, students are passive to a large extent because all the work is done by the teacher. It encourages rote memorization because students themselves are not doing anything. They are not engaged. They are just listening and they have to memorize all the things that are said by the teacher. It is not effective for higher level of objectives such as analyzing or uh, exploring or evaluating and creativity. This does not increases the creativity of the students. Students are dependent on teacher all the time. 
there is no scope for students to ask, to argue, to engage, to explore. Hence, it is not at all suitable for lower or elementary or secondary students. In order to be effective transmitter of the knowledge, the teacher should make all the four moves while teaching in the classroom. Hence, he has to follow the sequence. He have to use the first move as statement of the rule. To conclude, we can say that despite of its limitation, expository approach is still a preferred approach because it helps students acquire some basic skills and procedural knowledge. It is very much straightforward and is done in a step by step manners. The structure of an expository lesson helps students to stay focused on the topic at hand. Often times when students are using other approaches such as discovery method or 5e model, they are processing information on their own. They can get distracted and confused by unnecessary information and have difficulty determining what is important. This is why expository instruction is one of the most common instructional strategies. Most educators believe that students learn new concepts and ideas better if all of the information they need to be know is laid out before them in a sequence. Expository in instruction goes beyond just presenting students with the fact and it involves presenting clear and concise information in a purposeful way that allows students to easily make connections from one concept to the next concept. Thank you.